What's happening my beautiful people? My name is Mike and today as you can probably see in the thumbnail We're talking about the birthday edition of Gareth Bale if you've watched my live streams or of course the YouTube channel Then you're well aware. I rate Gareth Bale. He's excellent in this year's installment and I would place him in that top tier Sector of different players that are usable via the weekend league if you enjoy the content Please drop a thumbs up. It also tells me you want to see more videos similar to this video and on that note in the comments which player would you like to see me review next and what type of format do you like for a player review or a player specific video because I want to build out a certain type of package in terms of graphics and animations that parallels properly with this type of content for of course you guys at home the consumer so let me know in the comments that would mean a lot to me do me a solid let's go now we're starting this out right you can see Gareth Bale's attributes on screen and the major change from his inform or even his standard card is the defending this man can now play defense. We've got the Tottenham Gareth Bale. On a side note, I'd love to see him return to Tottenham. I'm not sure exactly what position he would actually play in their current squad with the talent pool they have for central midfielders and then Harry Kane up top. I mean, you're not going to move him around. I'm going to call this segment the little things because Gareth Bale is one of very few players that can play at the highest level in a variety of different positions on the pitch. Left striker, left center attacking midfielder. You can play him as a center mid, you can play him as a center defensive mid. Of course, you could play him as a left back. I don't think that would be his prime time position, but I'm just stating he's not gonna be a liability. But we have the little things. Number one is positioning. Defensively, offensively, he's got this. Two, set pieces. He scores goals and he's gonna keep goals out. He's athletic. It's as if you have another Cristiano Ronaldo on the pitch, except he's not just limited to going forward. He's definitely gonna get back and he's gonna defend naturally. Three, he's not a weak player. I'm not sure what they put him on when he went to Real Madrid, but he beefed up and it definitely shows in FIFA his strength. It's noticeable. Four, if you're a pressing player, you're gonna love Gareth Bale. He has to be in consideration for a top 10 player in the entire game in terms of being able to pressure your opposition just the sheer speed and athleticism, it's a problem. He breaks up plays. Number five and an underappreciated trait that Gareth Bale offers is his ability to kind of hold up plays. Whether it is down the wing or it's in the middle of the pitch, he can turn and shift his body and he's able to give you more time. He's able to make sure you don't lose the ball. You're playing at your own speed, your own rhythm. You're dictating the pace. In the first clips, I wanted to showcase some of Gareth Bale's ability to skill and more importantly, even turn on the ball. And you can use this in a variety of different ways in terms of your build up, your hold up, your control. He's not built like Adinho, Balassi, Mares. That's not Gareth Bale, but by no means is he clumsy in terms of being able to do ball rolls, heel to heel, chops, drag backs. Some of the more simple skill moves, if you wanted to see an elastical out of Gareth Bale, that might not be in your best interest. Uh, I think the advanced spin, not coming out real clean. In fact, I wanna do a video not just covering some of the top skill moves, which I have talked about in FIFA, but also skill moves that have been forgotten, skill moves that have been lost. And I feel that way about the advanced spin, actually. Be tapping twice in a diagonal direction, right if you wanna go right, left if you'd like to go left, and I like to start out in the arena, get some practice under my belt. And I've been using the skill games to get that side view. And I prefer using the dribbling skill game just so you can get ready for matches. This needs to be instinctive. And this skill move is extremely effective. It reminds me of the scoop turn last year. It's quick. Uh, and you can do it from all sorts of different angles. Uh, most of the time, your opponent's actually not going to be looking to defend this skill just because it's the first FIFA installment that has been included. Look at that drive from Neymar. Sideline safety. First example, I was kind of caught in between two minds, and I used the sideline as a very safe option. My opponent either would have pushed that out for a corner kick, or in this case, it bought me a little bit of extra time. He was in no man's land, and a barbo is going to finish. And then another way that I really enjoy using this skill, as you can see in the second freeze frame, is to take space. I need to make my opposition defend. I need him to try to make a tackle, to make a mistake, especially post-patch. Uh, people just sit back on their uh, line, and you need to bait them into some instinctive errors or overplaying. Something where you can make an adjustment and drive through them. Skill moves have changed quite a bit. Next up, we have winning the wing play or dominating the wing play, controlling the wing play. I normally use Gareth Bale 
as a left attacking midfielder in a 4-2-3-1. That's my favorite spot to utilize Gareth Bale in this year's installment. However, like I said at the beginning of the video, he has many positions that he's still at this top tier level. It's just a matter of what you need in your squad. These clips showcase Bale being able to win the wing in terms of his 1v1 matchups, holding up the play, having the ability to shift the match in your favor more often than not. You want more examples? I have more examples when we're looking at finishing and if you get it on Gareth Bale's left foot, whoo, outside the box, inside the box, 1v1, you name it, it's not an issue. I actually would say that his right foot is better than what we've seen in the past. Side note, you will always see more of the offensive clips compared to the defensive or even in the midfield where you're seeing chase back or breaking up plays. I think they're more entertaining to watch. You guys can let me know, maybe I'm incorrect. His aerial presence scores goals. Even if he's not in the most ideal position, he's so athletic and he's just gifted with that noggin. He gets in there, he causes problems, he challenges every single aerial lob or cross, goal kicks, you name it, it's all good. I'd also like to give credit to Gareth Bale's passing, whether it is those short, intricate one-two passes, the tiki-taka, or if you're looking for deep through balls, long passes, crossing, even if he's under pressure, his accuracy, it's not going to sway, and it's just a beautiful thing when you have a player that gives you so much in so many different positions, and it also allows you to use super subs in different roles because Gareth Bale can shift. So maybe if you had him as a center attacking mid or a striker and you wanted to bring in fresh legs to go up top, you move Gareth Bale to a center defensive mid role or a center mid role and you bring in your new player and you take somebody else off the pitch. And I've noticed that that is a definite possibility and I do that every single weekend where depending how the match feels, I don't necessarily have to sub bail out, but I can just shift them around the pitch, which gives me more options and more versatility. If you enjoyed it, please drop a thumbs up and get in the comments. Let me know about concepts and structure regarding player-focused videos, but I have a lot more content coming for you ASAP, ASAP. <laughs>